All right, so in Godot, let's take a look at our setup first, as that is probably the more important part. Now, what I have here are two things. Now, you can see I have my main menu. And again, this is an extension of my uh, 3D RPG course that I made a little while back. And I'll link that in the uh, description. So if you want to check that out, definitely check it out. It is a very cool series. Uh, but essentially, what we're going to do here is we're going to take a look at the room that we have. Now, this room, we can see here, has corners. And we also have a few things. Now. I've used the grid map to do this, and you don't have to, but there's probably more efficient ways. But uh, essentially, all we need are two things, either a door west or a door or a wall west. So the wall will cover the wall, essentially not allow our player or you know, the person to move through this. So we need this for all four directions. And, oops, there we go. We just move to the left. And... Essentially, we'll be able to name each one and show or hide whichever ones we want through code. All right, now let's head over to our level procedural and let's take a look at what we need here. Now, all I've added to this scene is a world environment, just so we can actually see the scene properly, a camera and some light. So nothing crazy, just this very simple 3D scene. Now we're going to attach our script here, and this is where we're going to create our procedural uh, dungeon. Now, to get started, what we're going to do here is we're going to add a few things. We're going to export our room scene. And you can see, in fact, when I save that on my right hand side, you click the node, you will find the room scene and you, we can now load the room. So this room right here, we can load this in by dropping it in. This allows us to take our room scene and pop it into the room scene. All right. Now, back to our level one. We also can export the, very, the dungeon width and dungeon height. This way, it's just a bit easier for us to play around with. Next, we also have the room size. Now, for now, we'll keep it at 10, but I'll kind of show you why we have this in a second. And then we also have the variable rooms. Now, this is the array that is going to hold our 2D array. Now, the first thing we're going to do is, well, we're going to call our function ready. We're going to generate the dungeon, dungeon uh, when we do call this. Now. When we call this function, what we'll do is we're going to do two things first. We're going to first take our rooms and set it to empty. This will allow us to just make sure that our rooms array is empty. And that way we can always regenerate the dungeon at a later point if you'd like. All right. Now, the question is, what do we do inside of this dungeon? Well, there's two parts to this uh, generate dungeon function and how we actually generate it. The first part is we're going to need to create a for loop, two for loops for our dungeon uh, width and our dungeon height. This will essentially allow us to place our rooms inside of the rooms array uh, and just fill our 2D array. Now, this is not it, right? We All we've done is essentially added all the rooms. This adds all our rooms into the array and dungeon. Now, we also, as you can see, have this other function called place rooms. Now let's create that function. This function is very simple. This one is just going to pass through an X and a Y, and we're just going to instantiate and create that room in that function. So this is very simple. All we need to do is uh, call the room instantiate, room scene dot instantiate. So if you remember the room scene is up here, we will then take our uh, room instance and set the transform origin to the Vector three x, which is passed through in the function over here, and two. Okay, we're gonna need to return something so to get rid of that error, and we're gonna take the room size dot x, set it at zero. So this is the uh, z or x y axis, I suppose. So this is just like the level that we're on, and then we're gonna set the y times the z. All right. Now, lastly, all we need to do is add the child room instance and then return a room instance because we're returning a node 3D. All right, back to our generate dungeon. So now that we've created all the rooms, we've, we've essentially taken all these rooms, right? We've taken a bunch of these rooms, so 25 rooms, right? Because uh, five times five over here, five times five is 25. And we've added them all into our scene. In fact, we should be able to hit play and we don't see anything. That's okay. Um, so we might have to actually add a bit more. But okay, we've added all the rooms, but now what do we need to do? 
Well, we need to actually set the visibility of all these things, right? How do we do that? Well, first we need to for loop again. We need to create another for loop outside of this loop. So we'll kind of enter space here or enter twice and go over here to the next line. Now over here, once we for loop through both of these, right, we're essentially looping through our array almost, not through our array, but through the dungeon width and height again. And as we do this, we want to gain access to which room we're currently in. And we can do this by just saying room equals rooms X and Y, right? All right. Now what we can do is we'll check to see if room is not equal null. Now the reason we'll do this is I'll kind of add this in a minute, but if we ever remove a room, this will allow us to actually just skip it, right? If we remove a room on in our array that we don't want, we can just skip that room and not do anything to it, right? Because it doesn't exist. All right. So now what we'll do is we're going to do some uh, crazy math and I'll take, I'll kind of explain this a little bit. But essentially, we're going to need to check to see if one room has a north room, a south room, an east room, and a west room. So what I mean by this is, let's say we have a room over here. This is our one room. There's nothing next to it. So we would return false all around it. But what if we have another room to the right? Well, I would return true. What if I have another room over here? Then I would return true on south and west. What if I have here? Well, I would return uh, true on south, west, and east, and false on the north. Right? So we need to keep doing this on our entire dungeon. Right? So this one would return true on north and east. I think this is east. <laughs> but uh, that's the idea. So we need to do that for all directions. Now we can do that by simply checking to see if y is greater than 0 for north. So this will allow us to check if the if this is greater than zero, and if it is, then that's good. If the room x uh, and y minus one is not equal to null, then that's also good. That means that there is a north wall. But if both of these are true, then that means that we have a north room above us, right? Now, the reason this is a thing is because, well, if this is zero or smaller than zero, then that means we're at the top of the array, right? That doesn't, that means there's nothing above it. So, Y. Now, next we have the y minus, or sorry, less than the height of minus one. Now, this is the exact same idea, but the opposite, basically. But we're going to check for the very bottom of the array, right? So, we're going to check to see if the bottom of the array has anything, or if we're at the bottom of the array. And if the room's uh, y plus one is not equal to null. So if there is something above it and it's not null, that means we'll return true. If both of these things are true, then this will be set to true. And I want you to actually do the other two. Now, the other two are basically the same idea. Or you can see that they're, the calculation is kind of the same. It's just using the x instead. I want you to kind of think about it and see if you can understand how these work. But the idea is it will just return true or false depending on the position of the array. All right. Now that we have all these uh, faces and va variables, we now want to set the door and wall visibility of that room that we're accessing to north, south, east, and west. And we're going to, again, set through the true or false variables that we just created. Now, obviously, we need this other function called set door and wall visibility. Now, this one is actually quite simple. And I'll kind of, this is somewhat important, so I'll actually add this and I'll kind of show you why we do it this way. Now, what we do here is I'll also do this. So we're going to go to set door and wall visibility. This is our function, pass through the room. We're going to access the room, get node, door plus direction. Now, the reason we do this is because in my room, you can see here that door is always set to door, 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 and then west, east, south, north. So it's very important you get the wording right, especially here, right? So here is very important that the wording is the exact same. All right, so this will allow us to get the direction or the door or the wall, right? So same thing for the wall and well, set the visibility, right? So if has neighbor, which is over here, which we pass through, so has a north room is set to false, for example, then we'll make the door visible to false and the wall visible to true and then vice versa for the, uh, if there is something next to it, right? So if there is a neighbor, then we'll set the door to visible to true and the wall visible to false. 
All right, so that is essentially it. But now let's, okay, let's not hit play in this scene. Let's go to our level procedural. And here we go. We can now see that the wall here is facing that wall. There's a wall, but there's a door here. There's doors here, there's doors here, and etc. Now, obviously, I can't move the camera, but that's the general idea and how we can do that. But now here's another question. Well, what if I want to randomly remove a room? Well, that's actually pretty easy. All we can do is get access, or not get access, but randomize. We'll create two variables called variable random room x, variable uh, random room y, and I'm going to create a random range between 0 and the dungeon width minus 1 and the dungeon height minus 1. Now, once I do this, all I need to do is well, I just need to remove something from the uh, the rooms, right? The, the rooms uh, array that we created, I just need to remove it. I don't need to actually uh, queue free or sorry, uh, do anything to the array. I just need to queue free and then set that exact position to null. Because if you recall over here, this is where it all happens, right? So here, if I just remove the room by queue freeing and then set that variable to null, well, now when I hit play, You'll see a random room gets removed every time. So if I hit play again, it'll be another room. And there you go. So you can see it works kind of. It, you can't really see it. Try one more time. All right, there we go. We can see that it does work too because the walls are all built up next to it. So there's no doors. Now the room size you can change accordingly. Let's say eight by eight. I think eight by eight was the right size to make them all next to each other. But now they're actually inside of each other's walls. Uh, let's make sure that that is eight as well. And there we go. So this would be a more playable room game. And that's it. So this is a procedural generated room uh, or dungeon based on our room system. And there are, again, many different ways to create procedural rooms or dungeons. But this is a very simple way that hopefully introduces you to procedural generation inside of Godot and inside of uh, my series, my 3D dungeon series. So. Uh, this video was requested by someone so if you guys would like to add any requests uh, comment down below and let me know what you guys would like to see in the future and hopefully i'll see you all in the future